Hello, everyone. Welcome to Next Big Future. I'm your host, Brian Wong. Today, I'm going to be talking about the world-changing um, molten salt nuclear energy technology. So uh, I've had uh, TEDx talks about um, energy in general. Um, and I've written um, thousands of articles on energy and technology on my website, Next Big Future. And um, here I have... Um, a uh, shot of something that I've summarized, which is looking at all of the um, advanced nuclear power projects. And I've also reviewed, um, um, for many times because I ran the Carnival Nuclear Energy um, uh, of many blog sites together for many years. Uh, I've covered nuclear energy in great detail in all forms of energy. So there's 440 existing nuclear power plants, and then there's several projects, all and most have uh, pretty good funding. So I think that they're likely to have um, these reactors built. And then after they're built, then it'll be the um, different companies competing to scale up the technology. So in the past, there have been multiple winners in nuclear fission. The United States, uh, of course, built most of the reactors. Uh, they have pressure wire reactors, they have boiler wire reactors. Canada has built uh, almost two dozen heavy wire reactors. Russia has built beauty reactors. Um, France, Japan, China, South Korea, many companies, countries have built uh, commercial nuclear power reactors. And there's multiple technologies that have been successfully developed. Um, molten salt is interesting because it's kind of like molten metal, uh, kind of like lava, you can think of it like that. Um, and so then it, it's liquid, it's moving, unlike uh, solid rods or other kinds of um, nuclear fuel, whereas it doesn't move. It, it's in normal operation, the rods um, stay like solid metal. And then the problem is when they melt down. But molten salt is um, a, in a kind of a liquidy state at all times. Um, pebble beds also have small pebbles that can, you can, you know, they can flow out. The reason that this is important is that you can have a freeze plug, something at the bottom of a reactor where basically the, the plug will melt at say a thousand degrees. So above the temperature you want it to operate at, the plug will melt and then the material will drain out, either pebbles or molten salt will drain out into holding tanks. So this means that it's physically impossible for the thing to have a meltdown where it continue to operate at a higher temperature than you want to. Once it hits the temperature limit, then uh, something melts, physically melts, gravity takes over, and the, the system um, goes into a state where it will just um, you know, cool down, okay? So meltdown, physically impossible. And this also goes to the, the point of walk away safe, where you know, if you lose power, you know, like the nuclear plant, is connected to the grid and uh, computers and other things that are running. So that, you know, in um, Fukushima got hit by a tsunami, you know, 100 foot waves came over, washed away uh, fuel tanks, uh, and then the, the plant, you know, got into a bad state. This old 60 year old nuclear power plant got into a bad state in Japan. Cannot happen in the new, in the new designs that they're working on here, where basically if anything, the power goes away, other things happen, then the chain reaction is that it will, um, the freeze plug will melt and then it will go into a, a safe condition. So the two um, projects I'm going to talk about today, one is the Seaborg reactor, um, Seaborg Technologies in Denmark, and the other is Thorcon, which is an American company that's trying to get their first reactor built in Indonesia. And both are interesting to me because they're um, basing their reactors into ships and uh, nuclear powered ships, you know, has a long history because, you know, nuclear submarines, nuclear aircraft carriers, you know, long history of having you know, nuclear power on ships and even on barges. By having it on a ship or a barge, it's surrounded by water, water that can be used to pump and cool the system. And people say, oh, well, you might get um, nuclear material into the water. The ocean has 3.5 billion tons of, of uranium in it already, and also thorium. So the, um, there is nuclear material already in the ocean. So if you add any more, it's a drop in the ocean. Seaborg is looking at that. They're looking at um, 
uh, having a commercial prototype in just two years. So maybe a slip you know, year, and then they could still be roughly on track for 2026, 2027. And then they want to make a power barrage and then make serial production. So kind of a not quite mass production, but you know, making one after another very quickly, perhaps in a, in a factory type situation. So you already have 100 employees. They've got $26 million in funding on track to probably make their prototypes and then make the barges. And I think that the building molten salt reactors, which are smaller than rugged nuclear reactors, um, also safer with fuel, that they could uh, get this mass production thing going. Thorcon has an even stronger mass production for ships. Let me talk about Thorcon. So they're working with Indonesia. They want to make 3.5 gigawatts of power for Indonesia. Indonesia is growing and they have a country with a lot of islands. So they move around their power and, and need to use ships. So the, the bids are kind of in with um, Indonesia. Hopefully I think they prove then within you know, uh, five to eight years, they should have a substantial amount of uh, nuclear power uh, built. But, you know, they, and they still have to make the, the total funding decision, although they've gotten state governments, um, local ministries, other things are uh, falling in line for um, Indonesia to uh, give a yes to Thorcon. So we're going to have three layers of reactor barriers again to, for the safety. And again, you can see that they have the, um, the drain tanks and other materials to, uh, to prevent um, the uh, thing from melting down. And you can see also that the drain tanks are below the water line. So again, they can pump in water. Um, so again, you can have the default safety systems. Also, if you could uh, like and subscribe, that would really help with the algorithm. Okay, so Thorcon is built into a can. Again, they have the drain tanks. So safety is physics-based. Gravity and temperature melting is what the safety system is. Thorcon is designed for high quality shipyard construction. They, they've They've uh, partnered with the third largest uh, shipbuilding company, and they uh, their founders were involved in making uh, large ships using modular construction. Ships, um, you know, container ships. Other ships are built with, you know, these large block modular construction where you have 110 elements. They put you know, 100 together to make a 50,000 ton, 100,000 ton ship. And the precision steel builds ships about two thousand dollars per ton. So if you can get that kind of cost, then you can make a one gigawatt nuclear reactor for a billion, billion two dollars instead of like ten billion dollars for um, the current large reactors outside of China, where maybe four billion dollars. And the world shipyards can build a hundred one gigawatt reactors per year. Building a hundred per year means that we could, you know, over a decade build a thousand. You more than double the amount of nuclear power in a decade. Over three decades, you could have you know, six, eight times as much, 10 times as much power, which would be, uh, to me, scale up a bit more, that you could then make a difference with uh, total world energy because you need to have thousands of reactors. And again, this is the diagram showing coal burning uh, plant and the existing um, nuclear power plants are built off of coal burning plants where instead of a coal burning of a, a nuclear um, pressure wire reactor or something like that. And then the molten salt re reactor is about 20 times the less volume, 23 times less volume. And then they've worked out the economics of it where it'd be cheaper than coal. And you'd be using six kilograms of uranium per day versus 10,000 tons of, of coal. So this would uh, clean up the world, enable the developing world to have more power, um, designed to scale for mass production. And both these, the Denmark, Seaborg, and the Thorcon are using ship-based construction, where I think had a good chance to be uh, uh, very well uh, scaled. And then the, the molten salt technology is also uh, inherently superior in terms of potentially lower cost. So that's the, how our world could change by 2030 with the molten salt reactors. So thanks for your time and talk to you next time.